how to find deals. You know, there's there's no one best way to do it, in my opinion. It's how many of y'all fish? Maybe someone can teach me. I've never, I grew up in El Paso, Texas, a desert. We don't fish there, so I don't know how to do it. But I understand that if you have more rods out there with bait, you're more likely to catch something than if you just had one, right? At least in theory. So, um, my, one of my favorite things I do is I have um, search criteria set up on LoopNet. And I'll, I'll have it alert me when a new deal pops up in the 5 to 50 unit range. So there's, there's search ranges. You could say 5 to 50, 50 to 100, 100 to 150. Or you put whatever criteria you're searching. You all have seen that in other sites, right? Same Movato, all these other sites do that for houses. Well, you could do that for apartment complexes. You could do it for warehouses. Right now I'm really liking warehouses. So I have it indicate me where, when a warehouse is popping up. Uh, Craigslist, believe it or not, I, I did not use Craigslist at all until a year ago. I bought a church in El Paso and I uh, was starting to restore this old historical building and um, I, didn't, I didn't have my crew. You know, my crew was here. So I, I didn't want to, I didn't, I didn't have anyone to go work on the church. So I put out an ad on Craigslist. The next day, man, I could not believe how many people showed up at the church to work. It was amazing. And uh, uh, so I thought, this Craigslist thing's actually pretty cool. So I started going on there, and I started looking at real estate for sale and finding finding all kinds of great things posted. Who uses that now? Y'all go on Craigslist. Um, last week, I had a, a tree limb fall. Went on there real fast, needed someone to come cut a tree down, grind the stump. Bam, you know, it's, it's amazing uh, what a great resource it is. Um, it's, it can also be kind of dangerous because you could find, if, for those of you all impulse buyers, I, I bought a motorcycle with a side scooter the other day and that was kind of <laughs> an old Russian bike that I couldn't say no to. But, um, okay, wholesalers. Uh, have, have any of y'all ever heard of wholesalers? No, wholesalers are amazing. I really, really, um, I really emphasize that because I've come from an environment that have not embraced wholesalers. Uh, there's a mindset that some people have that, oh, those guys are just middlemen. They're going to make the knock up the price, and you don't you you want to knock out the middleman. It's like no, that's really ignorant. That's really ignorant. It's uh, you've got to have that abundance mentality of first of all, there's enough for everybody. Secondly, wholesalers work really darn hard to find those great deals. You know, um, share with me how many. Uh, Postcards that he sent out, five thousand, and those five thousand rewarded you with your first closing. Can I send up and share. Share. I went through about 40, 50 phone calls. Um, got a few angry people to start off with. Well, why were they angry? What they say? Um, they, didn't, well, they wanted off the list because we send out postcards to people that own property, not that they're in any distress. They said, I'm not telling my house, take my name off your list, and mm -hmm. go through that. And uh, you, you also take phone calls, and people just want retail price, so they want too much, and it's not a deal. Yeah. You just have to go through, go through, and finally I got her phone call, and she was distressed because she was behind her payment. And how many, um, how many days of taking phone calls, from, you, you put out your postcards, you took phone calls for how many days before you got your deal to work? Seven days. Seven days of taking phone calls. And that's actually pretty fast. Way to go. Well, congratulations. That's his first closing. A 10 grand. And uh, I asked him earlier, do you feel guilty for making 10 grand that easily? It was about two or three hours worth of work, so I mean, I'm a little guilty when I spend it. That's right. That's right. No, heck, you, you earned it. You're not working hard. You're working smart. You earned it. Um, I wouldn't have, those last seven days, I was with my sister in El Paso. You know, I, I, I wouldn't have been being able to take those phone calls. Right? So if he's taking phone calls for seven days and you're taking phone calls for seven days and you're taking, you know what? I've got all these people out there fishing for me. And it, imagine wholesalers as, now I'm saying this, a lot of y'all are wholesalers, but I'm going to pretend that you all aren't. Okay? Imagine wholesalers are people that are out there baiting the hook, spending all that time in the sun. And then when they finally get a fish, 
they, they call you and they go, hey, we got a fish for you. Here, you reel it in. And they hand you the rod and you get to sit there and go, I caught a fish. And look at the picture of my fish, right? Like, it's kind of like what you always imagine, like the super rich people do. They, they, have the little, they don't want to get dirty or whatever, like in the old movies. And the guy just sits there and says, I'm taking a picture with my prized fish. But who did all the work? You know, the, the, the guys are out there. And so that's, that's, in my mind, that's what wholesalers are. So I, I value them uh, immensely. And um, I recently had a combination of these things. Uh, I saw a deal pop up on my um, list of 5 to 50, my criteria on LoopNet. And I got an email, a, a text actually. We've got this deal that popped up. I looked at it, and it was a 25 unit on Yellowstone that I shared with some of you all. And uh, it was a wholesaler that a lot of you all know. And the guy was really honest with me. He said he wanted to make $30,000, and uh, he had it on under contract with his owner a heck of a lot lower than I thought I could have ever gotten it for. I was really proud of him. And I said, well, shoot, yeah. I'll I'll buy that at the price. I ended up buying it for um, two hundred forty thousand, so just under ten thousand a unit. Okay, so two hundred forty thousand. He was able to make his thirty. The lady that was selling it was happy with her two hundred ten. And why was that wholesaler so successful at making his thirty thousand? Was there everything we just finished talking about? He got really in tune with what her problem was. The lady's uh, husband had passed away, and um, the property just every time someone moved out, it was just it, it just okay. Now there's 20 families to collect rent from. Now there's 17 families to collect. From. Now there's 15 families to collect rent from. They they would never go in and do the make readies and refill it because that's just not what she did. That was what her husband did, and her husband was gone. So uh, and unfortunately, she didn't have that thinking of let me just hire somebody to go do that. Right? She could have hired a management company as an alternative, but. She was thrilled to get that burden off her back and have $210,000 to go do something with, right? And I was thrilled to buy something. Um, now, why was it so cheap? Part of uh, the value of, of how you analyze deals, and we're going to get to that in a second, is in apartments, it's all about NOI. And what's NOI? Net operating income, right? And so, and what does NOI mean? How do you get there? Your revenue minus your expenses. And what's left is your mortgage and your profit. Okay? So the mortgage and the profit. The, by the way, for those of you all, we always think of payments as PITI, right? So when we talk about mortgage and NOI, it's just your PI. Your TI, your taxes and insurance, are in the expense category. Okay? So uh, the lady's NOI was terrible because she only had five people paying rent when when by the time this wholesaler had gotten to her the poor complex had gone down that much um there were seven people living there two were freeloaders and five paying rent and um and the rents were only 350 dollars it was still too low still too low and so um that was in april so what are we now it may june july august so I've owned this for four months, um, and I same kind of concept. I've changed my thinking. I don't go look for just anybody anymore. I had a buddy of mine that used to be a roommate of mine. He's always said, Chew, I can't believe I go to work in my little Carol. He has one of those office Carols, and he always complains about being in his office Carol. And uh, he says, next time you do a deal, will you please call me? So I called him. I said, I got this deal. I'll include you on it because you were just complaining about your office, Carol. And uh, but I need two hundred forty thousand fast. And he says, "Okay, I've got it in my." Uh, uh, and I had sent him to Quest IRA. You know, he he. Uh, I love telling people go see Quincy, go see Nathan. For those of y'all that don't know the guys at Quest, you gotta look them up. But they're amazing people. So, so it was really cool. We bought this complex. His IRA and my IRA both bought this complex. So his IRA put in 240000 to buy the deal. 
my RA put in a thousand just because they said I should put in something. It didn't look good if I put in zero, the IRS might get too upset. So I put in a thousand. And uh, and this week, uh, Friday, we just got an offer accepted of five hundred twenty-five thousand. This property I just bought for two hundred forty four months ago. So uh, we did the math, and he'll make one hundred ten thousand, and I'll make one hundred ten thousand on that deal. And poor Jerry, he was like, "I've never made that much money in this amount of time. Let's go to Vegas." I'm like, "Dude, no." Man. It's like, I'm like, come on, that's why you're still working in the office, Carol. You can't think like that. You know? uh, he's, he's serious. Let's go to Vegas. So I told him, uh, awesome. we'll, we'll go to Vegas, but we're going to put a limit on you. All right, we'll go and have a celebration. But um, so, so why was it able to sell for double in just four months? What do you think happened? Yeah. NOI doubled. So NOI doubles, the property's worth more, right? How many of you all focus on houses? How many of you all know, know what determines the value predominantly on a house? Comps. Exactly. Now, apartments aren't like that. Apartments, people will look at the comps, but they're it's just such a different world. It's not like neighborhoods where there's houses side by side by side by side. You've got different apples and oranges all over the place, right? And bananas, and you can't compare them very easily. So that's why NOI is used instead. It's just a matter of how much money it's making. So we like that. It's very different than your house world about comps. Over here, I drive the value. In houses, the comps drive the value. So uh, it's pretty powerful, right? Um, so I'm sharing a little success story that would have never happened. Um, so I just made 110. Jerry's making 110, and then the wholesaler brought it to me, made 30. You know, why would I complain about him making 30 when he just helped me make 110 that I would not have made? Like so, so there's people with really messed up thinking about letting everybody make money. It's just, it's a, uh, it's a shame. You're just. Uh, Realtors and brokers, that's the traditional, like what I call traditional way of finding deals. And, and they'll also have people that say, oh, realtors, I don't like realtors. Same thing. They're just out there fishing as well. They want to close a deal. They want their commissions. They're hungry. And, um, and, it, and you get relationships built with realtors. Uh, how many of you all already have good relationships with realtors? Most of you. Good. Good. Uh, one thing I say to everybody, and some of y'all have heard me say this before, whenever you meet a realtor, do not tell them, I'm an investor. When you find a great deal, call me. Have you ever heard anyone say that? Yeah. And you're like, oh, dude, another one of those guys. Okay, fine. You know, and then you, they get the card. I remember one time, the first time I had cards when I was young, I gave a guy my card, and he literally looked at it, and he threw it. I was so hurt. I was like, what the heck just happened? I went and picked it up. <laughs> I was like, I'll give it to somebody else. I honestly he looked at it and he threw it. I was so humiliated. But now I get it. There was no there was no reason for him. I had I had no value established with that guy. What, what did he need my number and name for? So it was powerful because then I learned when I walk up to people now, I say, uh, hey, I'm a real estate investor. If you ever have a piece of crap that nobody wants, that looks terrible, that you wonder, oh my God, how can I ever show this property to anybody because it's a hermit that's got stuff piled everywhere, the roof's caving in, call me. That's the kind of stuff I love. Crack deals, prostitutes, you know, <laughs> all that stuff that you wonder who would be crazy enough to buy, think of Chewy. And, and people are like, every time, man, I'm going to hold on to your card. I had one of those loser deals last month, and I, I, I sure, sure could have used you at that time. Well, the next time you get one, call me. All right, does that make more sense? So you guys all use that concept or your own version of it, okay? Create value with people. There's, there's how many people in Houston? You know, three point something million? 6.5, and we take the surrounding areas, right? The, uh, and there's thousands and thousands of brokers. And there's, why are they gonna remember to call you, or call me, or call you, when we're in a city this huge, 
right? You've got to do something different. So we're talking about how to find deals. The, the real basis of this is you need to distinguish yourself. And the beautiful thing about it, like I always tell my kids, is you're already perfectly unique, right? You know, there's no reason to do anything to stand out. Just be yourself. Just be your, find what your own special thing is that, that you want to accentuate about yourself and, and let it shine. Go out there, let people know who you are and why they should call you. And remember, there's thousands of other people telling them the same thing. So don't sit there. I've actually had people call me and say, Chew, you just bought that deal. I'm twice as rich as you. Why'd they call you and not me? I was like, well, if you, I don't know. You're just, probably because you go around telling people you're twice as rich as everybody, and you're trying to be like, maybe they, don't, maybe, maybe they don't like you because of that. I don't know. And so I, I always like it when people get mad. Like, Why did I get the call and they didn't? I'm like, well, you know what you get with uh, what comes around goes around, right? It's um, treat people well and, and connect with people. Um, property managers. Why do you think property managers are a good resource? They know what's going on in the property. Yeah. And, and, and they're dealing with um, the owner ongoingly. And there's going to be a time when that owner is going to say, dude, I'm ready to sell this thing. Come on. Let's get the rents up. Let's get the numbers looking good. I'm, I need to dump this. So they're the first ones that are going to know a lot of times that a property's up for sale before a realtor will ever get called. So I love, um, I've gotten, you know, you all have heard of Tarantino properties. There's a big, big guys in town. I bought uh, two com apartment complexes from Tarantino's people calling me for that very same reason. Excuse me? What is Tarantino? Oh, it's just a property management company in town. Look up property management companies. Tarantino's one of them. There's tons, tons of them in this big city. And just get to know get to know them, just like you get to know realtors. And say, hey, if you're ever managing a property that you think that owner's just finally sick of, and, and there's positive reasons for someone to sell a property. Like, I'm 80 years old now. I don't want to deal with that anymore. Or I'm relocating. Or, you know, there's... Tons of reasons. What's that? They certainly keep their jobs. Beautiful. That's a great, great point. What he just said is they get to keep their jobs. So if they're calling me, hey, I'm, I'm managing this 30-unit complex. Uh, hey, I want to tell you about it. But, dude, if you buy it, remember, I'm the one who brought it to you, so keep me as the manager. I'm like, of course. Why would I fire him and put a new management company when he's the guy that brought me the deal? Right, so perfect. Thank you for saying that. And and if the guy sold it to some stranger, that stranger might have his management company he already works with, and there's a good chance that he is about to lose his job. Right? Uh, I'm selling a complex of mine, and the maintenance man called me. I'm probably going to be losing my job when he closes. Are you going to give me a job somewhere else? It's the first thing in his mind. And I said, why do you think he'd lose your job? You're doing a great job. I'll tell the guy to keep you there. Yeah, but he might have his own people. And you got a point. I'll tell him to keep you. You're doing a great job. If he's not going to, I'll give you a job somewhere else. So, thank you. Br brilliant point. Driving around and observing. How many of y'all do that? Y'all are dangerous drivers, right? <laughs> you scare your spouses. That's how I drive. I'm like, look at that deal. Oh my gosh, look at that. Where's my pen? I gotta, what's that? Uh, so, I, I, I'm better at that now, but I used to be really bad about that. Um, I do that everywhere I go. I was in Washington, D.C., uh, took my kids for 4th of July to watch the fireworks and see all the Smithsonian things and all that stuff. And we are, we're there to watch fireworks. We're there to see the Lincoln Memorial and all that stuff. And then I passed by this complex and I went, guys, look how high the weeds are. Over there. And look at, there's a couple units boarded up. I bet you that's a great deal. This is obviously a landlord that's on top of this property. And they're like, Dad. Come on, we're not going to buy a property in D.C. Just, I was like, okay, I know, I know. But look, see what I mean, though, guys? That's what you want to watch out for. That's like, I know that property's got a motivated uh, seller, probably. You know, that owner's, that owner's probably a good guy to call. You live in D.C.? All right, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. It's, it was really close to the YMCA. I remember that. <laughs> I remember, I'm like, okay, how can I find this again? I'll find the YMCA and it's one block over. Okay. I was storing it. I told my kids, you're right, and I'm still sitting here. Okay, I'm going to figure it out. Um, 
driving around and observing, the, the thing that's powerful about that is when you find a property address, what do you do with it? What do you do next to find the owner? Hedge cat. Hedge cat, yeah. Where else? Court. What else? Lock the neighbor's door. Title company. And you guys are pros at that stuff. That's what wholesalers learn. That's that's the eat. That's what you guys eat and breed, right? So uh, it's it's fun, isn't it? It's like being a private investigator sometimes, like tracking people down. And I love it when they go, "How'd you find me?" Public records. <laughs> so lenders, buyer lenders, are a good resource. Yeah. Yeah. If y'all remember, that's that lesson I learned with those that 22 plex and the 12 plex. Before that happened, I didn't know that bankers. Um, okay, we all know when people get behind on their payments, they get foreclosed on, right? You get a letter that says your note's accelerated. You have the X number of days to bring it current or we're going to foreclose. Well, I always think of that computers just kind of do that, right? Oop, it's automated. Okay, it's behind. Generate the acceleration note. Gen you know. Well, maybe that happens in some cases, but um, it turns out a lot of lenders aren't going to start the process until they know who's going to take it. You know, it's like a baton. We don't want to hold the baton and we're running a, we're going to let this guy pass it to the next guy. And uh, we, we want to just stand back and let the baton get pa passed and just keep making our money, you know. So once you get that, now you're a problem solver for lenders, right? Back to problem solving. Um, investment clubs. I'm sure every one of you all go to investment clubs, right? Here at Tim's, you uh, have the deals people stand up and talk. Uh, you have one minute each. And then all of y'all push your limit and go past the bell. I see y'all. No one wants to stop when they have one minute of presenting a deal. But that's a great resource. And of course, delinquent tax lists. You guys, um, most of you all probably tap into those for your ha for your wholesaling postcards, right? What, what's another great resource that y'all are using for your wholesaling postcards? Where are y'all going for your lists? Yeah. So same same thing. Just all right. They have fun, fun deals. Let's see what time is it. How to fund deals? The old traditional is mortgages, right? Banks, mortgage brokers. We've already talked about private lenders, partners we've already talked about, subject to, who doesn't know what subject to is? Most of y'all, okay. So buying subject to is, is beautiful. It's, uh, I recently bought two townhomes from a guy. I wasn't looking for him, but all of a sudden I saw on a list that he was about to lose his unit number 30 and unit number 35. And um, called the guy and said, hey, I, hear, I see you're about to lose these properties. And... And he goes, yeah, would you pay, pay him current and take over the payments? And I said, oh, both of them? And he just flat out, he's an attorney even. And, and uh, he said, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to lose about six properties. And, and if you could look at the others too, that would be great. And the others were not good deals, but I helped him with those too. So the note is still in his name at Wells Fargo. Every month I go and I make a payment in his name to that note. However... He signed the deed over to me, okay? So you're the owner when you have the deed, but the debt is still his debt, which is nice because when people pull your credit report, you don't have that on your debt ratios. This is really kind of cool. Um, so it's, it's not just cool because you don't have to go get a loan. It's also cool because you don't have that debt under your name. Um, Cross-collateralizing, what is that? Yeah, yeah. What you do is, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure where I learned this, but man, it sure helped me about 10 years ago when I started really growing 
and I had bought, I had been buying my little houses. Remember, I told you guys I was really, I, I've never had a lot of cash flow because I'd like to take a lot of my cash and I make big payments on everything, and I, I just that's just my mindset. You know, I tr try to pay things off, um, and so what happened was I started having houses free and clear. Well, then I went to a banker and I said, hey, um, I want to buy this 15 plex. It was over on Shenavert in front of Baldwin Park. Now, back then it was Third Ward, now it's Midtown. Because, you know, make it sound cool. But um, uh, yeah, back then they wouldn't even turn on the park lights and all the drug dealers would hang. And there's a, there was, a, there was a, a pay phone right in front of my property and that was like the hangout. All the cars would come in, use the pay phone, do their deal and go on. And, Man, now there's a there's a running track and it's all yuppie. I'm like, God, where were you? Where was the city when I needed them to fix it all? But but um, but the lender looked at that and he goes, I don't know if I want to lend on that. It's a it was a historical beautiful brick building, but he says that's kind of rough part of town, which now it's prime, you know. But back then, it's kind of rough. I don't know. The numbers make sense, but it seems risky. So I said, Well, I'll tell you what. I've got this other property. It's free and clear. Um, the house is worth like fifty thousand. What if I sign it over to you as as collateral, and and instead of every month worrying, man, was it worth taking that risk? You're going to be sitting back going, man, I can't wait for him to default on that loan because then I'm going to have the complex and that house. And you saw his like dollar signs go in his eyes. He goes, you're right. I kind of like that idea. You know, I'll be looking forward to you defaulting, not literally, but if I do default, he's in a better position, right? So. Um, that worked, and I did that again and again and again. Uh, I, had, I had like uh, four free and clear houses, so I used that strategy to buy four more complexes and gave each banker a house, and um, that made it really easy and quick. You know, so, uh, and that's why I say be creative and combine all these ideas. Whatever you come up with, there's no one right way to fund a deal. As I've, uh, as I've talked about, I've got deals where the people gave me owner financing. Um, actually, owner financing is not on that list, but it should be. So I've had people with owner financing, and I got a partner for part of the money. Or owner financing and a private lender. Um, a bank loan and cross-collateralized. Right? All pretty clear stuff, right? It's all straightforward. Any other ideas of how to fund deals that aren't on this list? IRA. IRAs. IRAs, you're right. And, and I kind of throw that under the private lender uh, category, but where to go for private lenders? That's one of my favorite places, yes. IRAs. What's another place to go for private lenders? How about 1031? 1031 exchanges. Yeah, there's there's some guys in town that are great. I don't know if y'all I get on these lists where people send. I've got a customer right now that needs to spend four hundred thousand dollars on a warehouse. There's one that just came out this week. If you guys saw that one, so yeah, people are driven to spend their money. They have a certain period of time to do it. Yeah, it's a great resource. Y'all know what ten thirty ones are? Okay, so so ten thirty one. What he was referring to <clears throat> is uh, it's an IRS opportunity that they give you to um, when you sell a property say say you bought a property for 200 and you sell it for 300 you would have profited a hundred well if you take that hundred you now have a profit of a hundred that you pay taxes on however you can do a 1031 rollover which says I'm not going to profit with that hundred and put it in my pocket. I'm going to go buy something else with that money, and and you go roll that money into another property. And there's a set number of days that you have to identify the property. A set number of months you have to close on it, and um, it's it's kind of like pay me now or pay me later. Is what the IRS says. You're going you're going to get your money eventually, and they'll get a tax bill from you then. But for now, you can. Roll it off to something else, and we won't charge you taxes. Um, let's see here. Whoa. 
Let me see. What I want to do is go online to LoopNet. The Punjabi song. Okay. How many of y'all have not been on LoopNet before? Whoa, what is that? ABBA, my daughter's favorite. <laughs> Somehow, iTunes drives me nuts. It kicks on automatically. All right. <laughs> Let me see how. I don't see how to maximize that bigger, but that's all right. Okay, so loopnet.com. For those of you that don't know, it's a site. You can get on there for free. Uh, I do have a membership which allows me to see more than you can see on the free version. Um, and and let's just. Who, who wants to buy a complex right now? Who's in the market for one right now? Like literally in the market, but really wanting one. Okay. Cool. Several of y'all. Uh, about, you have a price range you're looking for, or a number of units you're looking for? Four. About four plex? 50 to 200. 50 to 200. An eight to 10. All right. Zoom it down. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so, so what you've got here is you. You can click and see properties are for sale, for lease. I've already put in Houston, Texas. And put the search in. And then you can sort. Um, like in this example, we've got guys looking for different sizes. So we could say, let's sort by number of units. How's that? Sort, sort by number of units. Okay, so let's just kind of look through here. We've got a boat and RV storage. We've got a unit on, oh wait, this is, there we go. <coughs> 2.2 million for that RV place, that looks like a lot of money. I'm gonna show you what I do. Okay, these are duplexes, they shouldn't really be on here. Uh, one to four units are typically on MLS, and this is typically five and up. Um, for those of you that don't know, a house mortgage is a one to four unit mortgage. And if you're buying a duplex, that's a house loan. If you're buying a threeplex, it's a house loan. If you're buying a fourplex, it's a house loan. If you're buying a fiveplex, you can't get a house loan. It's a commercial loan from that point up. Okay, so just just to have that distinction. Is there a big difference between the house loan? There is, there is. One of the biggest differences is your down payment, unfortunately, and the interest rate. Commercial loans want more down typically, and the interest rate's gonna be a bit higher. You know, so, yeah, great question. Thank you for asking that. And, um, okay, so here's, someone said four units. So here's a fourplex on South Moore. That's just, just for those of you that haven't seen this before, let's, Click in here and see what it tells us. They want 460,000, so that's how much per unit? Yeah, 115,000 per unit, that's pretty high. So if I'm, in my numbers, the way I, the way I say that 50% of expenses, if I'm gonna pay 115 per unit, that means it's gonna be about a $100,000 mortgage for that unit which means my payments are gonna be about 1,000, which means I should be collecting about 2,000 in rent. I'm sure these are not collecting 2,000 in rent. Um, they're collecting, okay, let's see. 4K. Owner will willing to lease back at 4K a month. It's a good area, I love that Southmore area, but um, it doesn't tell us exactly what it's collecting what it's collecting. Uh, it says it's 100, for those of you that also, let me take some time for those of you who haven't seen this, it tells you it's occupancy. It tells you if you're a realtor and you help them sell it, they'll give you 3%. Number of units, the size, price per unit. Okay, pretty pretty good stuff. Just to, to have at your fingertips. Yes, sir. Uh, what's your free way of figuring out how much rent you need to find for one? How do you that 
Okay. Yeah. Let me let me find another deal, and I'll go through that with you on another. You can see this doesn't take very much time at all. If you do this every day or every few days, you'll get to where you see the same ones almost all the time, and you've already like, oh, I've seen that. That's not a good deal. Yet. You know, and you just look for the new ones. And, and you could do a search by date, like the newer ones first. In this case, we did a search by number of units. So in this case, we got four units, 289,000. That's 72,000 a unit. That's less than the other. I mean, you guys know I'm cheap. I'm buying stuff 10 to 20,000 a unit. But it's okay. There's no one right price range. It's just as long as it cash flows is all we care. Let me tell you, there's a... Y'all you know, wonder why I stay in the lower, the lower properties. <laughs> so, so I'm glad you said that. I was showing Tim earlier. A lot of times, guys will make mistakes when they're entering their information. So, if there's two fourplexes, which it looks like it because you see on that building. This is actually got me about where I Yeah, and you see, you can see there's two separate buildings there, right? So this guy is kind of hurting himself because you're sitting there looking at going, ooh, four units, 289, that's not a deal. You, you go right past it. If you didn't click through to look inside and not realize, oh, there's actually eight units there. Well, it, 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 it's possible, but here it says description, two fourplexes, one one completely remodeled. Now, sometimes they'll say um, two fourplexes, each one going for such and such, or you could buy them together or separately, or you know, it should have a distinction in there. This one, the guy could have eight units and just didn't do a good job of putting his data in, kind of shooting himself in the foot there. I saw one that I that kind of caught my eye. Thank you. Yes. Um, there's a there's a lot of guys that like to say, "Go big or go home. Go big or go home. Why don't you go get bigger deals?" Well, in my philosophy, there's good deals in all categories, right? However, my mindset, I'm not saying this is true, my mindset is that the more of a businessman you're dealing with, as far as uh, a company, for example, a lot of companies own big apartment complexes. It's less likely for that company to be getting themselves in management trouble. Um, if, you, if a company owns a property, and somebody's husband dies, it doesn't impact the company. You know, uh, when I step into the mom and pop world, I'm dealing with individuals, and I'm dealing with people that are just everyday people that have everyday circumstances, and I find that, that there's more opportunities with that type of person. Now, I'm sure I'm passing up a lot of great deals in the big world, but I, I kind of like my niche. You know, I, I like knowing that I'm dealing with a lady whose husband just passed away and I'm helping her out, or the lady that needs some cows, or, you know, like, yeah, I'm dealing with a company. It's, that's not going to happen. You know, someone's doing poorly. If it's a good, you know, there's companies that mismanage, obviously, but it's, it's not as typical. Would you all agree? I mean, if someone's doing poorly and you uh, change them out, fire them, you know, individuals, have a harder time doing that. They might leave the same maintenance guy messing up because they, oh, I feel bad for the guy, you know, or he, he's my wife's cousin, or you know that kind of stuff that happens all the time, right? Uh, okay, I saw one here that had 13 units, and I'm going to use that as an example to go into. But you guys, if you're looking at the screen, you'll see all the different kinds of things that pop up. 
And you'll just get to where you're going one by one by one. Let me get to this 13 place. Oh, Tampico Gardens. I remember this place was about for sale years ago at 20,000 a unit. And I thought that was too expensive in those days because I was buying these kind of houses at 10,000. And what, 20,000 times 15 units would have been 300,000. Now it's up to 630,000. That's a lot of money. Yes. Okay, so the way you go in and these units, you can make a little call. Mm-hmm. You can go in and renovate or do some things to get them up. Yes. So if you buy them and they're occupied, how do you go in and fix them up while they're sitting? Well, that's a good question. Um, you don't do those till the end, typically. So, when people are living in the units, uh, they'll tell you what's wrong. Like, hey, we really got this problem over here, and you go in and you solve that problem for them. You know, you do maintenance. You don't really do a make ready while they're there. Um, typically, you're doing the vacancies. Uh, now, what what you do instead, if someone's like, I've had it happen where I've got a little old lady and her unit's really trashed out. And I, I say, look, ma'am, I don't want you living in these conditions. We just did a make ready over here. Why don't we let you move from unit 10 to unit 12, and then you're in a nice new place, and now we've got you over here. We can go redo this unit. And, and yeah, you, it depends. If, they're, if she's already paying a fair market rate, then she wouldn't get an increase. But if she's paying 300 uh, and the rents, like at Yellowstone, what I just did, people are paying 300 new people are moving in at 450 um, I'm getting 450 for my ones and 550 for my twos. The old owner had 300 for her ones and 350 for her twos. Um, so all the old people that were 300, I told them, okay, the good news and the bad news. The good news is your rent's going to be well. The bad news is your rent's going up. The good news is I'm going to go up to 400 instead of 450. I'm going to reward you with a little bit of a discount for being a long-term tenant, right? Yeah, and you can see already, and I don't do that till I've owned it for, I didn't do that till I owned this property for two months because I waited to let them see that I was already, I didn't want, I don't ever want to go in and tell guys, hey, I'm the new owner, I'm going to make this place beautiful, by the way, your rent's higher. No, I start making the place beautiful and people start going, wow, you've done more, it always happens. You've done more in a month than the last people did in a year. Like, oh yeah, thank you, I appreciate that. Well then... After they're happy with you, then you go, you know, by the way, you've had it pretty good for a long time. They don't. They don't. So one lady said, well, you know, I'm single. I might have to go get a boyfriend. I said, well, that's okay. <laughs> she, was, she was this funny little lady. Okay, this is the property I wanted to show you guys because, interestingly, um, no, it's not happening. For, so I just saw it a moment ago when I was looking with Tim. But interestingly, this guy, Ernie Enriquez, keeps calling me about a property that I'm selling. And so I saw that, and he called me last week when I was in Boise, Idaho, uh, Friday. And I just saw him, and I called him, and I said, hey, man, I, I just got your message. Is this thing your deal? And he said, yeah. So I told him we were going to look at his deal and give him a call. And I'm going to go through this with you all. Okay, so one of y'all had asked, so this is real, of the guys that said they want to buy something, is there anyone that this would be in their price range? About 13 units, somewhere around $350,000. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. All right. It's a 13 unit complex going for 27,000 a unit. It says the cap rate's 13.4. For those of you that, um, you know, most people are happy that 10% or higher. A lot of people buy things at an 8 cap, 7 cap, lower, if they're really, really, really nice properties in wealthy areas. But um, uh, older properties tend to go 10 cap or higher, so that looks pretty good. 100% occupancy, that looks great. All right, let's see what it says here. If you're looking for the perfect real estate investment to multiply your returns, 
This combination deal on 12 apartments and a house can be yours. Imagine having 13 units for the, okay, let's see here. The two options. Okay, here, look at this. Collect 6950 per month. All right, so you were asking about how to analyze. So we've got income uh, of 6950 Let's just round it up to 7000 Okay. My quick and dirty thing that y'all have all heard me say is take half off for expenses, right off the bat. The reason this is really important is sellers and brokers love to say that the expenses are very low. All right. So let's say this is this is Chewy's formula over here, and let's say this is a. This is a realtor slash the owner. So we're looking here, it says 7,000 a month. The guys, they'll, they'll typically say, it's about 20% expenses. I'm gonna make it sound like, of course, 20% expenses. So 20%, 1,400. And so then you've got 600 as an NOI. Whereas we have an NOI of what? 3,500. This, by the way, I actually had a, a real estate attorney, pretty educated guy, tell me, you're already laughing, why are you laughing? Oh, you work for attorneys, okay. Very highly educated, great experience, but this guy said, real estate's wonderful. Man, you can't lose money in real estate. And I looked at him, I said, you're a real estate attorney. Every month there's foreclosures. You know that. Those are people losing money in real estate. He was like, oh yeah. I was like, of course you can. I was like, of course you can lose money in real estate. And you lose money in real estate by buying wrong, typically. Okay? Those complexes that I, that I bought at, at 10K a unit, that Jeremy and I were trying to buy a 20k a unit. Guess what? The lady was trying to sell it at 25 a unit. And the reason she was trying to sell it at 25 a unit is because she bought it at 30 a unit. And the reason she bought it at 30 a unit is it's 29 units, so roughly uh, let's call it 30. 30 times 30 is a 900 thousand dollar deal. $900,000, these people are living in California, and they see this thing online, and they go, 29 apartments for $900,000? I could barely get a house here for that. What a deal. Let's take it. Oh, by the way, we have two more like that. Let's take all three. They bought all three of them at 30 a door. These poor ladies, it was a mom and a daughter. They bought it. Sight unseen. Have you ever heard people say, I bought that deal sight unseen? It sounds really fancy. I bought that deal. Sight unseen. It's like really stupid. Don't <laughs> do that. Don't do that. And I'm sorry if anyone in the room's ever done that. I'm not calling you stupid. It's just called maybe lucky. You're lucky. Don't keep pushing your luck. Um, these poor people did that. The day they saw it was the week after they had bought it. And they came down, flew down from California to see, hey, let's see what we got. And they showed up and that's when they found all the drug dealers, full, half of them paying, half, you know, and, and they went, oh my God, what did we get ourselves into? And that's when, that's when they didn't have the money for the payments, they got further and further and further behind, and then in bankruptcy, they went bankrupt, went into foreclosure, and I got it for 10,000 unit. So can people lose money in real estate? Yes. Yes, of course. Why did they mess up? They didn't understand the numbers. Okay? So, I gotta admit, this is super simple. When you know it. If you don't know it, you're gonna be on this side of the call. Okay? And I don't want that to happen to anybody. So, in this example, the NOI is 3500 I like to use the 1% rule. I say, uh, a $100,000 mortgage is going to have about a 
thousand dollar payment. Okay. Uh, Three hundred thousand dollar mortgage is going to have about a payment of what? Three thousand. Now that's really simplistic, and all the smart guys in the room, please don't. I know. Well, interest rates are at six point seven, and at six point seven, that probably is going to be two thousand seven hundred. Or you know, like yes, it's going to be a little lower. This is a conservative number. I'm rounding it up. I'm bumping it up. Now, and remember, I learned this stuff back when interest rates were commonly ten percent. Like this is really closer to the ten percent. Uh, interest rate days, interest rates are lower, the better you get, well that's just more icing on the cake, you know, consider that bonus, but I still use these numbers because it keeps me conservative, okay? So with this concept, this is a mortgage on how much money? 350000 Okay, so I'm collecting 7000 let me recap, collecting 7000 Half of it goes away in expenses, maintenance, taxes, insurance, make readies, carpeting, plumbing, electricians, air conditioner calls. Leaves me NOI, gives me enough money to make a payment on 350. All right, let's see what's this guy selling for. Three fifty-five. Okay. We're pretty close, right? So we, if the guy's asking 355, we could probably get him at 350. Okay, so we buy it at 350. How much profit are we gonna make per month? I hear zero, what else? A none, you're right. Zero profit. We can make the mortgage payment, and then there's nothing left over for us. But that's okay, we're break even, it's better than losing money, right? But you're right. Right there, the profit's zero. Okay. Well, that's a lot of work for zero profit for us to be buying complexes, right? But that's okay. I'd rather be break even than lose money, but I'd really, really rather make money. How much money do I want to make? So, my rule of thumb is I want to make $100 a unit. All right? It sounds low. But that's just what I go for. It sounds low. Um, you think, man, a lot of people through the years have told me, you work too hard for that little amount of money. Per month. Per month. Yeah. So in this example, how many units did we have? 13. So if I'm going to make $100 per unit, I want to make how much per month? $1,300. which is also known as like, like your positive cash flow. All right, so NOI is our mortgage and our profit, right? Can you guys see? So, so if that's my mortgage and my profit, if I want this much profit, okay, we got 3,500, there's my NOI. I want to make 1300 profit. So that leaves me how much? 2200 That's how much I have for what? The mortgage. Everybody following me? Pretty simplistic. Pretty simplistic. <laughs> um, if I have 2200 for a mortgage, how much of a loan is that going to be for? 220000 You got it. That's all I do every day, guys. That's all I do. So, they're asking this. It's okay. They could be asking 600 you know. What most realtors will do that don't really get it, they'll, they'll price something like this at 7000 700000 They'll say... Um, you're collecting seven thousand a month. That's enough to make a mortgage on a seven hundred thousand dollar loan. That's a great deal. This is a cash cow at seven hundred thousand. Look, you're collecting seven thousand a month. <laughs> That's what eighty two, eighty whatever thousand a year. That's a lot of money. And then you buy it and you realize, whoa, where did we go wrong, right? So here we are 
At $2,200, we are going to make how much a month? Profit? $1,300 profit. Okay. Now, can you guys go quit your jobs for $1,300 a month right now? You know, most of us can't, right? Um, so, so this is not like something to go get that thrilled about. But you can see this is just a 13 unit, you know. And you go get go get another one of these and another one of these, and, and, and it's just it's just like having rent houses, except you got 13 people paying you in one place instead of 13 different addresses, right? So, ooh, am I over? That's we're in the red. Ooh, sorry. Okay, I didn't see that. It was on screensaver before. All right. Let me wrap this up. So, we're going to do something really fun real fast. Let's call this guy and see. This is what I would do next. All right. You know, the reality of it is, it's pretty far off. However, however, there are times when I would buy it at break even, if if I when I do my homework, we see the rents like like the Yellowstone deal I just did. The lady was at three hundred in her rents, and I knew immediately I was going to go up um, hundred fifty. Right. Hello, Ernie. Yes, sir. Hey, this is Chewy Terrazas. I'm uh, giving you a call. I'm here in this class of real estate investors. We've got about sixty buyers in the room. You guys say hi to Ernie Enriquez. Hi, Ernie. Hi, guys. <laughs> Where are you? You're in California somewhere, right? I am in California. I'm in the beautiful Monterey County. I'm trying to find the country. Uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, spending your Sunday to invest in real estate. Um, you know, when I first moved to California, my wife and I. Also, uh, educating ourselves in a network. I told him I was going to call him from the class today. He's like, Ernie, let, let, thank you for, you know what? I'm already over on my time here, so I'm going to try to do this as fast as I can with you. I, I just ran through the numbers with these guys, all right? And and like I told you earlier, I see that you're making, you're collecting 7000 um, so just so you know, I told Ernie I was going to call him, but we haven't gone past that. All right, so here's where we're at, Ernie. We just ran the numbers. We're at 7,000 income minus 50% expenses leaves us at 3,500. We want to make $100 per unit profit, which is 1,300. So when I take my NOI of 3,500 and I take off my profit of 1,300, that just leaves me 2,200 for a mortgage. So. Twenty-two hundred a month on a mortgage is roughly like a two hundred twenty thousand dollar mortgage. Now, where you're asking, you're at three fifty-five, which is pretty close to three fifty. Um, we have enough to make that mortgage because our NOI is thirty-five hundred, but it would leave zero profit. So obviously, we can't be buying this thing for zero profit. Um, at least it's not losing money at that, but we've got to make some money. So what? What can you do on this deal? What can you tell us about this deal? How how'd you get to the number, and what's the best you can do on the price? Chapter twenty is really a, a, a deal chart. It's lower than what I have it for under even wholesale. Uh, I understand where you're coming from because I too read those numbers, and unfortunately, it's the deals were just too few or lower out there. Um, I got this deal off of. A mass mailing that I did postcards. I uh, sent a few thousand uh, out there, and the gentleman responded, and I was able to get it under a low enough price that I can still wholesale it and leave enough meat for the end buyer. Okay, uh, we're actually we're actually in a room full of wholesalers right now, so you're wholesaling this deal. Okay. okay. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, even with uh, the 355 is really lower than the retail price of, for the 13 units of about $400,000. But where are you getting retail price from? Because like, I always think price is really just NOI driven. So 
when you say it's retail price of four hundred, um, yeah, why do you think that? Eight point five percent market cap for that sub-market in Northeast Houston. Eight point five percent market cap. Yeah. That's too low for for an old property like that. Uh, Ernie, it should be closer to about a ten. A 10 cap. If you re ran your numbers at a 10 cap, what would you come up with? Right now, where the, with the actual that I got from the seller, you see, the seller is actually an older gentleman. Uh, he's in his 80s and he just wants to get out of it. Uh, he self manages, he lives in the This owner you're getting it from, is he willing to do any owner financing or does he have an existing mortgage that might be able to, like if we could do the subject to or something with him? What's going on with the owner? This is free and clear. He's owned it for three mm. years. Okay. So he is willing to carry a little over $200,000. Well, that's good. Uh, but I have a uh, $50,000 uh, for the down payment. Wait up, hang on. Let me, uh, okay. let me. Let me write that down. He's willing to carry how much? Uh, $205,000. Okay. And uh, did, he, did, did he tell you what kind of terms he'd want? Like number of years he would carry it for, an interest rate? Interest rate is 5.5%, 30-year amortization, 5-year balloon. Okay. That sounds all right. But what do we we yeah. we need to get that price down though? Uh, I like the owner financing, but we got to. I mean, it's not going to work at three fifty though. It's going to not give anybody any room for profit. Well, what about the rents? Are the rents? Uh, tell us a little bit about the rents. Are these ones one bedrooms or two bedrooms or what do we got there? These are all two ones. The okay. house is uh, two bedrooms, one bath, as well as the 12 units. They're all two ones, and they are now rented at $500 each. 500 a month. And uh -huh. and what is that all bills paid, or what utilities is the, the, would? Uh, it, the utilities are paid by the renters. Uh, the water is uh, paid by, by the owner. Yeah, the landlord. Uh, yeah. You know what though? I'm looking at. I was looking at this picture, and I see a, I see a real big gas meter on the side of the building, so that that makes me think that the landlord's probably paying the gas bill too, because it, it doesn't that seem like. Yeah. Okay, so, I know you were saying it's just the water, and he paid everything else, but it's actually I got to pay the water and the gas, right? 
Yeah. Okay. And the tenants paying their electricity. Okay. What kind of ACs? Great question. What kind of ACs? Are we talking about window units or are we talking about... Uh, no, these are a combination of furnace and cooling units inside each of the apartments. Now... Uh, the units are outside um, behind the building. Does it have condenser units up on the roof? I don't see any in the picture. No. No. No, nothing on the roof, no. They're on the ground down around the back or on the no. side? Yeah, that is correct. Okay. What other kind of questions? Flat roof. Flat roof. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wh wh what do you know about the flat roof? How bad is that? Uh, um, the roof is the roof is south. Like I said, we just had this property inspected last week. What would you say about the roof? It's what? South. The roof is structurally sound. That we need to replace it. Structurally sound. Have you seen it? You're in you're in California. Have you actually seen it? Yes, actually, I was there during the inspection. Okay, good. All right now, they're not being cash in the ticket. Okay, we got a guy that wants to get creative with you here. He's wondering if, if you could take some equity uh, for the down payment. Uh, no, I cannot. I'm also altering it, so unfortunately not. Okay. Um, any other questions? You know, Ernie, thanks. I know it's a Sunday. And I'm actually over on my time here, but uh, let me give the guys a chance to ask you a couple more questions. And then if there's anyone that's really interested, we'll, we'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll let these guys get with me if anyone really is interested in this deal. But I like the owner financing. Uh, any other questions while we got them? What's the lowest price you would consider? All right. What's the lowest price you would consider? For cash. For cash? Oh, if it wasn't owner financing? What's that earning? Yeah, yeah, uh, go ahead and give them uh, my contact information and uh, send me an email and I will send you the executive summary as well as the um, summary of the results of That's a good um, answer. He's on me. The the negotiations, the first person to give the number is right. So he's, also he must know that. that. I can up. Let's start from there. But if you, had to, if you had to give a number, what would it be? I would say 348 would be my bottom line. 348? That's hardly living. Oh, man. I was hoping for a. I know. I, I know. You're looking for a wholesale deal. I'm also You're wholesaling it. Well, I understand. you got to make your profit, but. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I know we can, I know we can definitely buy it at 220. Uh, and I know it would barely break even at 348. Why don't you go back and see how much you can uh, go push your your owner down and and then run your numbers and see what what you need to make as a wholesaler because we definitely respect you got to make your part. And then um, we'll talk tomorrow and see if we can find a happy medium. Okay. Okay, that's all here. All right, thank you, Ernie. You guys, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully we can. Help somebody buy a complex here if you're willing to get real and give me some good numbers and uh, that work for everybody. That'd be awesome. Thank you, Ernie. You're great. And uh, and and if it doesn't work on this deal, yeah. And if it doesn't work on this deal, we'll we'll maybe be able to help you on another one. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. All right. So that's that's all there is to it. That's that's my that's my world in a nutshell. That's all there is to it. Was that did that seem hard? No, it's, it's really really simple once we know this part, right? Now, now to finalize this thing, um, five hundred dollars. It doesn't sound like it's that big of a bargain right now. So I wouldn't feel like if he had said three hundred, I'd say, hey, maybe maybe it's okay to pay more because we can make some money. But times thirteen, that's only sixty-five. Now, if you got that house right there, that's an extra five hundred. Yeah. You saying that's a twelve unit in the house in San Francisco? No, but house. Yeah, that's a twelve unit in the house. Maybe thirteen. So anyway, we we can. Uh, this this was meant to just be like a taste of what's involved. Every one of y'all could do that, right? 
Uh, no big deal. So, uh, so, 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 how many of you guys are really uh, pretty clear on how to do this now? Yes. So, if a deal you know come across your table, you know how to run this, right? And yeah, all you have to do is run run these numbers. If the deals are closed, you know, bring it to us. We'll buy it, right? So, <laughs> uh, so, so, just remember that. That's all you need to know for right now. <laughs> That's it, guys. Thank you. I hope it was helpful. Yeah. And, uh, and um.